We are at Cherokee Marsh, my original fishing spot. That place where Pheasant Branch dumps into Mendota has been completely destroyed for the sake of kayakers, which I have a few things to say about that, but we'll save that for another day. Um, we're here at Cherokee Marsh. We're gonna fish for gato fish and bass. It's not pike season yet, but as you know, northerns bite anything that's biteable and some things that are not biteable. So uh, we'll probably catch a couple of them by accident. The water's still very cold for gatos, but I'm hoping that one gets really ambitious and bites. Now there's a lot of bullheads in here, so I'll probably get those, but I'm generally not interested in bullhead catfish. So let's get, in, let's get our baits in the water and see what we can catch. So Cherokee is actually pretty attractive for early season fishing like this because it is very, very shallow in the marsh, which means on sunny days like this, it actually warms a lot faster than uh, other places. And temperatures vary here a lot from day to day. It could be 10 degrees hotter on the water one day than the next day, uh, depending on if it's sunny or not and what temperature it is. Mendota is big, it takes a while to change temperature. Cherokee is the exact opposite. It's small and it does not actually take that long to change temperature. We're gonna just start off with a Bobby Garland jig. Um, I don't know if there's crappies in here, but if there are, they should bite this because crappies do bite in colder water than bass do. But let's see if we can get anything uh, hitting the Bobby Garland jig before we move on to the bigger baits. All right, the Bobby Garlands are awesome, but a problem with the Garlands is that they're too small. I can't cast them very far. So we're gonna switch up to the blade bait because it is a much more significant bait and I can actually cast it quite a bit further. I got one. I got a fish. I think it's a bass. Is it a bass? Oh yeah, it's a largemouth. Sweet. Largemouth bass, not a big one, maybe a one pounder. But yeah, got myself an LMB. Very, very nice. Largemouth bass. They like, they like my lure. I actually used the little white, uh, little white kind of uh, Rapala thing, but a largemouth bass. First fish of the day, a largemouth bass, maybe a pounder. I would say about 13, 14 inches. Definitely not good enough to keep. Not that I'm keeping them anyways, but a largemouth bass. All right, I'm gonna let the largemouth bass go, so I'm not really interested in keeping any bass. And it's, it's not very big anyways. It's maybe like a pound, maybe a little less, but nice bass. There you go, bass. Swim off. Nope, not, not, not that way. Yep, that way. That's right, it's a lively, so it'll do just fine. Not too bad of a way to start the day. I think I'm going to stick with this lure and just fish a little bit off to the side here. Water is a little bit higher than I used to here, fishing, but that's fine. Actually, I think that's good because I get trapped in weeds a little less often. And this kind of lure really does attract the fish. I'm gonna use a bigger green fish lure because realistically, like, I don't like using bigger lures here specifically. Um, that's really because like bigger lures sink and there's so many reeds in Cherokee Marsh that it's just not really viable to use uh, a lure that hooks up with all the reeds. But this does let me cast out a little bit further. And maybe I just can get it, if I keep it up, I can get it to swim not too far below the surface um, and maybe hook a fish. The bass are biting here today, so that's good. All right, I got one finally, got something else. It's been like an hour. See, oh, it's a northern. It's a, it's a fishling of death. It's not a big fish of death. It's definitely not big enough to be a big fish of death. It's a, it's a big, small fishling of death. Either way though, it's still a fish. Not pike season, definitely not a keeper, but a very, very small northern. The bait is almost the size of the northern's head. All right, a sm small fish of death. Small fishling of death. Not really what I want. It's not pike season, not going for these, but you get these fishing for bass all the time. But the northerns are biting today. All right, let's get this uh, fishling of death back in the water. It's pretty deadly, but not so deadly yet. It's too small. There you go, fishling of death. There it goes. Realistically, none of the pike in the marsh are really that big. They're all like, they're, they're a little bigger than that for the most part, but they're not that big. By the way, I think that's the first time I've caught something on this particular lure. The white ones usually do better. The darker color ones, fish don't seem to like quite as much. But I'm glad I caught one on this. Still going for the bass. 
I know they will bite these things. They'll bite the Bobby Garlands as well. The Bobby Gar these just have a much better hookup rate than the Garlands though. I might actually change back to the Garlands um, as things get slightly darker. Because there might be crappy here, and if there's crappy here, there's like, if there's actually crappy here, um, I want the crappie, and they'll definitely bite the garlands. Although with so many pike here, I don't know, I don't think the crappie would actually survive all that well. It's been a very frustrating day today, because the fish just aren't on their A game. They keep on swiping at my bait, and they keep on missing. Like only, I think I've gotten like five or six swipes at least, and like only two of them have actually connected on the bait. They're just not on their A game. They need to like keep swiping until they hit. They like go for the bait and then they miss and they just give up. That's no way to play a game. Gotta, gotta basically try until you succeed. I just picked up this massive bluegill from the water. Check that out. That's a, that's a, it's longer than my hand. It's longer than my hand. It's like, it's a good nine incher right there. Good nine inch bluegill right there. Fortunately, it's dead. Probably can pick up my Bobby Garland as well. All right, back to fishing. Interesting to have such bleak bluegills here. Very few things can probably eat them except for the large bass, maybe like a ginormous pike. But Cherokee Marsh does have some good panfish. I just don't really fish for them. I don't really know where the panfish actually are or would be right now. Probably within these rocks, but it's hard to say. A big fish like that probably doesn't have too much to fear in the marsh. Maybe like a gigantic gato fish or something, but that's about it. I think we finally got our third customer. I think it's a little bit more powerful than the first two. I don't know if it's a bass or a pike. Is it a fish of death? Yes, it is a fish of death. It's another small one though. Ah, I want a bass, but I keep getting fish of death. They're pretty deadly. Well, they're not really all that deadly. They're like really, really small actually. But check that out, another fish of death. Very deadly fish. Not all that deadly, it's pretty small. It's like a, like a 14 incher, but I landed him. Another fish of death. All right, not really fishing for these, but you know, this uh, lure is the only thing catching anything. So uh, let's uh, let this fish go and uh, keep fishing for bass. Well, small fishling of death. Could grow up to be a very big fish of death. Probably in Lake Mendota, see a pike. Darts right off. All right, let's see if we can get ourselves a bass. And we've got one with this lure. One bass, two pike today, and about like 30 missed hits. I don't know if those missed hits were pike or bass because they're both in here. There's a lot of pike in here though, and that's problematic because since there's actually a lot of pike in here, like it's harder to get the bass because the pike basically just bite everything. They're incredibly aggressive. They're kind of like the like gars of the north. And that's actually kind of bad. And my catfish poles haven't done anything either. Really hoping for a big gato fish as well. But honestly, the water might just be a little too cold these days for a gato fish. Seems like I've got another dink on my hands. Is that a bass? Is that a bass or is that a fish of death? It's a bass. It's another one. All right. Another largemouth bass. Sweet. Another pounder or so. Both caught on the same lure but another largemouth bass. Awesome, awesome. Second bass of the day, second bass of the day. Another one, slightly smaller than the first one, but another largemouth bass, second bass of the day. Not only pikes, but bass are hitting too. All right, you bass of largemouth goodness. You're going back in the water. That was a fun catch, fun catch. See you, bass. And it wiggles right off. Oh, that was good. The only thing I'm missing now for my day is the catch of a very large gatoish fish, which honestly the water just might be too cold because not even the bullheads are biting right now. And you know, those things bite just like crazy, whatever. But like most gato fish, they're warm water creatures. I think the larger ones are warm water as well. So let's keep fishing for a little bit more. Maybe a more gatoish fish will bite. Fishing is pretty relaxing overall. I mean, I think if the marsh weren't so inundated by like tiny little pike, I think you would get actually more bass that bite. But uh, so many tiny pike in Cherokee and they bite the exact same thing as bass do. So regardless if you're using Bobby Garlands 
like these type of like swim baits or flicker shads or whatever, you're gonna get plenty of pike bites here. More pi definitely more pike than bass here. I got one, I got another one at sunset. This one's like, I think it's another northern, yep. It's another fish of death. Is that, is that a bass or, no, yeah, it's a fish of death. I was excited, I was like, man, dang, that's a, that's a big bass, but no, it is indeed another fish of doom. The fish of death. They're getting pretty deadly these days, but three pikes and two bass so far. I really, really want a gato fish, but it looks like it's just too early for the gato fish. So I'm gonna let this pike go. And uh, it's our fifth fish for today. Yeah, this one's slightly a little bigger, maybe like an 18, 20 incher. Bleeding a little bit at the mouth because of the hook, but not what I wanted to catch. He's still going after larger smallies, but we can just get this pike in here and have it off. All right, I guess we're fishing to the dusk. I know sometimes the bass do actually bite after uh, sunset. I fixed this lure, put another treble hook on the first thing, which I shouldn't have taken it off in the first place. So maybe, maybe I'll actually have better luck hooking up with more fish now. There are a lot of reeds there though, and I can't really see where I'm throwing anymore. So there is that. But now I have two treble hooks on like there should have been. And it's actually swimming, the swim action is a little bit better now. So maybe we'll have more fish biting. It is getting to uh, cosmic twilight. So I don't really know if the predatory fish are really gonna be biting all that hard anymore. But we've had a pretty good session today with finding that giant bluegill that was nine inches and also getting um, pike and bass uh, here at Cherokee. Two bass, three pike so far. Not after the pike, it's not pike season. I'd, rush, I'd much rather just have five bass. Really want a big bass right now, but not really sure if I'm gonna catch one since it's this late into the day. Lo and behold, I think we finally got something on this pole. Yeah, that's definitely a fish, but I think it's a bullhead guttlefish because uh, it's not big enough to be anything else and it's fighting exactly like a bullhead. Could be a pretty big bullhead though. It did actually have some pole on the line, but it's definitely a bullhead guttlefish. It's a lesser catfish, a lesser catfish. It's a fat one though. All the bullheads here, oh, that's a pretty good one. All the bullheads here, maybe like a pound or so, but it's a fat bullhead. Not what I want though, definitely not what I want. A really fat bullhead guttlefish. It is a catfish, but it's a lesser catfish. A bullhead catfish, one pound though. These get pretty big here, uh, and they, in Mendota they get way bigger than this, but a one pound bullhead. All right, this is gonna end the day. It's another bullhead guttlefish. Fishing with worms just is really not going to uh, get me too much these days, except for bullhead catfish. And so I'm not really that interested in bullheads. That's gonna do it for today. This one is rather large. Actually, this one, this one actually might be bigger than the first one. These, these guys are chunky. These guys are very, very chunky. Bullhead catfish. It's a pretty big bullhead, probably like 1.2, 1.4, maybe even one and a half pounds. All right, bullhead, see ya. That's gonna do it for tonight's episode of fishing. I mean, I wanted to catch a big channel, but it's impossible with all the bullheads out there. They're pretty big. If you like eating bullheads, not a bad place after dark, but I'm not interested in eating bullheads. I want a big channel catfish, and that would just destroy all my bait immediately. Gets a hit every like two minutes. So uh, we're gonna go home, but uh, Cherokee Marsh is brimming with fish. Not pike season yet, but there are good bass here to catch. You'll catch like pike by accident, obviously, because they're here everywhere. But I hope you enjoyed this episode. Like and subscribe, hit that bell notifications button, especially if you want more fishing videos of Wisconsin and Missouri sometimes. So I will see you guys later.